Hiya guys, Spectre here. Um, just something I've spotted recently. I mean, people have talked about it anyway, but it's how bad the AAA failure has become. And these are just three companies out of the whole pack. And there's a lot of them out there. You've basically got Redfall from Bethesda, and that fell faster and harder than the asteroid that killed the bleeding dinosaurs. Starfield, same company, literally got lost in space. You've got Skull and Bones would have been better if they got lost at sea, but then they shipwrecked on our island and created a whole mess. And then Diablo 4 went that deep into the dark, you can't even see it anymore. It's, I don't know what the hell happened or how. This is Google Trends, all four games as you can see. Obviously here you had Spikes, I'm guessing probably the release day or something like that for Starfield and Diablo 4. Fucking Skull and Bones flatlined as it came out. Redfall, I mean, at a peak here, this this is like a fucking terminal heart attack patient, this is. It's like, pff, what? And these are AAA games from AAA studios. Do they not think about the games before they make them? Or allow, allow the developers to have the proper time to make them? I mean, it might not always be the money men stood there, like, tapping watch, going, come on, faster, need this game out. Sometimes it might be some bad developers, but I refuse to believe it's all bad developers. Because some of these developers have been in the industry a long time, and have produced some bloody good games. I mean, with Diablos, I mean, I didn't play 3 and 4 because I felt the story were wank. Diablo 1 and 2 where it's at, but they were good games. For Bethesda, you've got Bloody classics like Oblivion, you've got Skyrim, you've got um, Fallout New Vegas, amazing games. So there is some talent, or at least was some talent, at those studios. I mean, I'm not sure if they're all still there. I don't know the ins and outs. Um, as for Ubisoft, they've made things like your first three Assassin's Creeds. Assassin's Creeds were really good until they killed the main character. Don't know what the hell that were about. But it's, it's just bad to see this is what it's come to and then what we'll do is example is now this is not a peak time of the day this is in the morning for me but Diablo 4 triple a title obviously won't show people playing on battle.net but three and a half thousand people that's embarrassingly low starfield similar 3929 redfall Literally not a fucking soul. It's deader than the undead that are in the game. And if we look at their competitors, let's have a look at Last Epoch. Oh, this is also an ARPG, like Diablo 4. 73,303 people. At the same time of the day. Ooh, I wonder why that might be. Maybe because they made a good game. Helldivers 2. 134,000 people. Lethal Company. 19,866 people. And bear in mind that game is one developer. One guy. It's just... It's weird to see the place of much smaller companies to much bigger companies. Now some of it may be the price tag... Because some of these games are ridiculously expensive. This one, priced at £60, I'm not being funny, it's a rip-off at £15. Never mind fucking 60 They are having a laugh. Um, Diablo 4 is probably not going to be any fucking cheaper. Nope, £60 as well, and it's at the moment half price. Half price? Should we paying us to fucking play it? Fucking pile of dog shit. Starfield. Also a £60. I'm currently down at 40 Needs to be a lot lower than that. A lot lower than that. And then what we'll come on to is AAA failure mapped out with competitors of smaller studios. So you've got your four failures at the top. 
in the AAA ballpark. So these games are probably costing upwards of 100 million, if not more. You've got Baldur's Gate 3, which got Game of the Year. They're a double A studio. Helldivers 2 are an A studio in terms of like how many developers they've got. I think they might be heading towards double A now. Last Epoch is a B studio in terms of size. You've got Pal World Double B. I haven't played Pal World, but I've seen gameplay of it and heard a lot of positive things. Triple B, Lethal Company. As it says, literally one developer. It's one guy who makes the game. You've got games like these, and again, this is not always down to like graphics. Some people like graphics to make a game good. Lethal Company hasn't got good graphics, technically, in this Power World, to be fair, but the game is good. It's fun. That's what a game's supposed to be. A game's overall mission statement at the end of the day should be, is it fun? If it's not fun, you made a shit game. In some cases, a dog shit game. I don't understand with companies at this size how they're basically churning out overpriced rubber dog shit. That's basically what it is. These are shockingly bad games for what's come out recently compared to smaller studios. Now, I think Baldur's Gate 3 has got it right in what they do. Baldur's Gate 3, as I understand it, I've not looked into it in depth, but their CEO and his wife hold, I think, 70 or 80% of the shares. And the only other shareholder is Tencent, the big developer from China. But they have no voting rights. That's in their contract. So with them having no voting rights, the CEO and his wife are the ones in charge. So they're not going to be going to their developers and going, come on, faster, we need to chill out this game. They're giving the developers the time to make a good game. And it shows in the fact the game was massively well received and got game of the year. So I don't think it's all down to developers. Some developers might be bad and not very good at the job, but I bet the majority probably aren't. So, developers out there, if you see this video at all, if you have got guys there fucking tapping the watch that are the money men, going, come on, we need to get it out, take that fucking watch off their arm and beat them around head with it. Because they're fucking idiots. Tell them to shut the hell up, because they don't know what the fuck they're on about. Because it, it's, it shows in the performance of some of these AAA titles that in some cases, it's got to be a mix of the two. You might have some bad developers. Some bad developers don't create games that bad. That'd be majority bad studio. And these studios have produced some very good games in the past. So, this has got to be down to the money men, investor types, that are tapping wristwatch and saying, come on, speed up. Speed doesn't make a good game. If you want a game to sell well, and it to push forward the company's name and people be like, oh, that was fucking banger. I'm going to buy their next game, no problem. Now, I know there's inflation at the moment and game prices are rising. Me, I'm an old schooler. I won't buy a game above £45, <coughs> above £45 anyway. If a game comes out of that price, I'll just wait for it to come on sale. And I'll buy it when it's in a price range I agree with. But some of the price of these games, like when this fucking CEO of um, Ubisoft said um, it's a quadruple A title and it's worth the £70 price tag. No game, no game is worth £70. None. You, you can't put an extra £20-£30 on the game by saying it's something that doesn't even exist. Quadruple A is not a thing. This is based off the bonding system. This is how the bonding system works. That's what it's based off. There is no quadruple A. It's not a thing. Because to be a quadruple A, they have to be a quadruple B. And there isn't. It. People like him haven't got a clue what they're talking about at all. They're obviously money men, the CEOs. They don't do any of the development. They're probably like hand in glove with the money men that are basically getting the developers to hurry up. When you've got the resources of a AAA studio and you can actually iron out the bugs and produce a good game, give the developers time to do it. 
Let them actually make a good game. Not a piece of excrement that we've been getting. And then trying to charge a premium price tag. End of the day, dog shit in a nice fucking gold shiny box wrapped in a goddamn bow inside is still dog shit. Now, have I played any of these games? No. I haven't played one of them. Because when games come out, I watch other YouTubers, I have a look at some streams on Twitch, and I see if the game looks any good. I have a look at the gameplay itself, and let the game speak for itself. I don't just take someone else's opinion at face value. I have a look at it and determine for myself, does it look good? Would I like to play this game? None of these games looked good, and none of them still look good. Now, games that I also technically haven't played Baldur's Gate 3, but it's something that I'm getting around to. I will be playing that at some point. I've got Helldivers 2. Thank you, Kyle. My moderator, one of my friends, he bought me Helldivers 2. Last Epoch. I've got that a moment. I'm playing for it a moment. One of my community members called Shreif bought me that. Pal World, I haven't played, but that's not my type of game. But it doesn't mean that the game's bad because I don't like that type of game. And obviously, by how many people have played it, the game's obviously very, very good. Lethal Company's a game. Bought myself. I play it on stream. Very simple game. Easy to get into. Slapstick and funny with a few friends. My, my, one of my community members, Jamie, absolute killing machine with a goddamn signpost. Just beats all the animals to death. Well, mo animals. Monsters. Monsters. They're not animals. Um... But the, these are three very good games I can attest to that I enjoy playing. Do they have their bugs? Sure. They've got they've got problems in them where they crash sometimes, things like that. Well, actually not Last Epoch. But the other two have crashed on me. But these are smaller studios. Some At some point, sort of leave the company still in early access, so it's expected. But the games are a lot more polished and better performing than these ones up here. These have released in some terrible, terrible states. And when it comes from games, it's like one of my personal favourites is Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas was like the absolute goddamn king of the Fallout series at the moment. Hopefully they might have some more bangers coming out. But like the most recent one that tarnished it was the um, Fallout 76. Again, didn't play that. Because I was like, why have they turned a single player game into a multiplayer game? There's no reason to. If a single if a game's a single player series, keep it that way. If you want to make a multiplayer game, then get an entire separate part of the studio to make something like Fallout Online and make an MMO out of it. And do an entirely different thing. Because let's be honest, the Fallout's based all over the planet in a post apocalyptic world. You could expand that fucker for years. Do that instead of trying to make a single player game into a multiplayer game. That's not what that is. They're a single player story driven open world game. Stick to what you know. Don't try and reinvent the wheel or put fucking size 4 stocks on a guy that's got size 12 feet. It ain't going to work. The, these companies either need to be given the time, giving the developers the time to make the games, or need to seriously think about what they're making. I mean, Skull and Bones isn't so much a developer issue, just the game is shit. And by what I mean is, the, the gameplay is just bad. You can't board other ships. The graphics look shit. Especially compared to one of the previous Assassin's Creed titles. I think it was Black Flag. That actually had good graphics and boarding. It's like they made a pirate game. That can barely be classed as a pirate game. I, I don't know. I mean Starfield was that empty. It might as well have been a walking simulator. I mean Diablo has been bad since Diablo 3. And I, I don't even know what to fucking say about this thing. I mean, I don't even know what the, what the hell that was. I really don't. I don't know who thought this would be a game that people would want to play, personally. It was a bad idea from the fucking get-go. But the, these big companies need to just start and think about what they're spending this money on. You might have got billions, you might have even got trillions. It doesn't mean you go and waste $125 million on a game. When some of these games down here have been made and made massive groundbreaking profit 
for a fraction of your cost. A fraction. And in some cases, one developer. One guy. And you've got hundreds to thousands of employees. And you can't even make a game that comes on par with this. And his game, by the way, £8.99. Less than £10. And you're charging 60 and 70 fucking embarrassing on a monumental level so just my take on what's happened with the triple a failure and something that needs to stop in the industry otherwise these triple a studios are going to find themselves having a lot more cuts and being in a much harsher problem these are going to be the triple a studios of the future as long as they don't get lost in the spotlight like these and don't have money men fucking tapping to watch, they should continue to churn out good content for years and years to come. And I hope they do. And probably a good idea would be to do what the uh, CEO of Baldur's Gate 3 does. Make sure that you have all the voting rights. The developers can be given the time they need to make the game. Keep the money men the fuck out of it. Money men don't know fuck all about making a game. What the people want. They care about getting the game out fast so they can make some money. If your game is shit, no one's going to play it and most people are probably going to refund it. You're going to make no money. So, just tell them to shut the hell up. When it comes time to sell the game, then we sell the game. That's how it should be. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, stay safe and I'll catch you all in the next video.